Hi, right, now here's a guide on how to update your firmware on your um, Android or Linux based box running XBMC or whatever, uh, whatever you're running on it. So, on your device, you're going to have to find the reset button. Okay, so um, I've got a few examples here. It's usually in a different place depending on the box. On this particular one, which is the Total Revolution Mark 1 from Total XBMC, you'll see there's a reset button just there. Okay, little hole there. On, I've got a Recon Magic one here. You will notice that actually it's hidden down the side there, just there. And on my test example that I'm actually going to use, the little black box, it's actually on the bottom and somewhere on here, you see that? There's a hole there that says reset. Now, first thing you've got to do is um, obviously find your reset button. Um, you may have to look that one up. Um, it should be in your, uh, in your instruction booklet, or if not, um, check the relevant forum for your device. Uh, once you've got that, you're going to need to download the latest firmware. Um, there's usually plenty of different ones out there, so make sure you do your homework and always make sure that you get the correct firmware for your device. Um, if you flash incorrect firmware, there's a very good chance that you may brick your device completely. So just be aware of that. And if you're following this guide, I'm not taking, um, <laughs> I'm not taking credit for anyone bricking their devices. So uh, yes, just be extra vigilant when, when checking the firmware. Make sure that it is for your device. Okay, There's plenty of different chipsets out there that, uh, that may not be, be compatible. Um, once you've got it, you're going to download it and put it on either a USB stick or SD card, um, depending on you know what uh, what the uh, uh, ROM developer um, thinks you, sh you should use. Uh, some some do actually uh, prefer you to use an SD card as opposed to USB stick uh, because there's files set up in a certain way. Um, but uh, but yeah, download your ROM. And make sure you read the instructions because sometimes they do require um, unzipping and putting on the stick or card before you insert it. So some require them to be left zipped up and some don't. So um, just be careful of that. Make sure you read the instructions. Um, what I usually find, if you can't find on the instructions whether or not you need to unzip, if you open the zip file that you've downloaded, if that then contains another zip inside there, um, the chances are you actually need to unzip it first. So um, so just unzip it and pop all that on the root of your, your card or USB stick. Okay, so now that's over. What we need to do is, you can see this little black box is on at the moment, little blue light. Um, so we pull the cable, pull the power. Make sure you've got no um, USB or SD cards or anything like that in because... I have found in the past on various different firmwares and different devices that you can actually um, it, it can stall the boot up time. You you, you can um, you can find that it might not go into recovery for quite a few minutes or if at all um, if you've got devices uh, inserted. So make sure there's nothing in it um, unless of course you're using an SD card and the ROM uh, developer says that it's uh, it's an automated install because you can get those where it automatically installs. In that case, you know, pop the SD card in and, and then do the recovery um, thing. But um, but for most, uh, we'll do it like this. Make sure you've got everything out. Um, you'll obviously have the HDMI cable in because you need to see the output on the TV. So you'd have it plugged into the TV and then you find your reset button um, which I've already lost. There it is, right? Um, and you get a toothpick, okay? Pop that in there and you'll feel a button. Can you hear? I don't know if you can hear that, but you can hear that click. So hold that down, and whilst you've got that held down, I'll just move that over there so you can see. So hold that down, and then plug in the power, 
and leave it held in for about four or five seconds and then you can let go of the reset button and you'll find on your TV it may take uh, just a few seconds it could take um, you know a minute or so depending on your device and the existing ROM and recovery that's on there but uh, have some patience just give it a few minutes if need be and um, and it should pop up on your screen as I'm just going to show you in a moment um, if it's not working what I have found in the past, um, I don't know if it's just luck or perseverance or what, but um, I've found that if we do that process again, so take out the power, hold it in, and then power back up, and just hold it. Hold it for, you know, and until it comes up in the recovery um, menu. Uh, like I say, that may just be, um, that may just be absolute fluke, but uh, I have found that does seem to work on occasions. And um, you'll see here, I've got a bent up little uh, hair clip. Now that fits in the hole as well. That is not something I would recommend doing. You can see that obviously I've done it because I couldn't find a stick. You've got a pretty good chance of, um, of shorting something in there if you use something metal. So I really wouldn't advise it, okay? Always try and stick to something non-conductive like uh, you know a little toothpick, that's perfect. And uh, actually, before we move on to the recovery menu, uh, some devices, I will just tell you, um, some devices, bizarrely, uh, the reset button is in the AV out uh, port there. Very odd, I know. Um, you've got a very good chance of shorting something in there if you, uh, if you go wrong. But, uh, but yeah, if you can't find it, it could be in there. I think, I believe, Matricom devices uh, usually put it in there. Okay, so we'll go on to the recovery menu next. Okay, so uh, we've booted the little black box into the recovery mode now by holding down that uh, recovery button. And it took just a few seconds to boot into this. And um, what we actually want, I've got it on a USB stick, the file that we need to flash. Um, so we want to apply update from EXT and then that's going to give us another menu. Now, as you can see, um, we've got the option here to install from SD card or U-Disk. So SD card is obviously the SD card if we were using the SD card method um, but as I'm using USB that is uh, that's what that's what's classed as U-Disk so I'm going to click on that and it should show me what's in my USB stick and as you can see there I've got a zip file that I downloaded so I'm just clicking on that and that will now go through the install process and it shouldn't take long. It uh, it could take uh, maybe a couple of minutes, but um, generally speaking, uh, yeah, it, it shouldn't take very long at all. And it'll give you a little progress update of what's going on. And what you'll find is in that little progress uh, bar there, it tell you exactly what's going on. So it will let you know if um, if it's actually doing a factory reset as well. Um, but whether or not it does, um, I would still recommend once it's done to click on the factory reset option in the recovery menu before restarting your system. Essentially all that will do is wipe a load of uh, old user data that could still be on there. So um, you know you've got a nice fresh ROM so there we go we've got our ROM here and if we go down to the uh, factory reset click on yes that will then wipe any old data that may still be left on there. So it's just a, just an extra little fail safe to make sure that it is going to work and there's not going to be anything on there causing conflicts. And, uh, and then once that's done, it will let us know that it's uh, completed. There you go. And we can then go to reboot the system now and it will boot up into the new firmware.